morning, this is Gabriel Lal on the National Outlook. As promised before, we want to close out this week on this Friday by talking about oil. Oil democracy. And as basis for today's conversation with you, my fellow Guyanese, wherever you may be, I go back to Wednesday's Kaichur News, where it says, what Exxon is doing with Payara is what it did to Trotman in 2016, Chris Ram. And I want to cut to the chase here and to share with you something interesting, something rather intriguing that we haven't heard before that Mr. Ram put on the table. He said that we must be, and I'm paraphrasing here, we must be appreciative of what the Americans and the other powers did in our struggle for electoral democracy in the five months just before August. And I agree with him there. Then he also said this, they cannot appear, he said, to be totally insensitive to Guyana, and I'm hoping that good sense will prevail, that they would be America, and the B and the C and the E and all the others who were so instrumental in moving things along here to where we are today. He said that Guyana must have, must say, Guyana has the right, reserves the right to not be rushed. We're talking about Payara here. And to undertake a proper review of the contract and the Payara FDP. We reserve the right not to be rushed and to undertake a proper review of the Payara FDP. Proper, to my mind, means satis comprehensive and satisfactory. Now, I want to take a step back and go back and focus primarily on America. It was very present and very vocal, even when it was silent, on what was happening here, what was unfolding here from around March to the end of July. And there's much regard for that in many circles, especially in government circles. Now, in 1923, President Coolidge made an interesting statement, a very broad statement. He said, the business of America is business. Okay? And in 1953, before Congress, Charlie Wilson, president of General Motors, mighty General Motors, one of the movers and shakers of the American economy, said this to Congress, the business of GM, the business of General Motors, is the business of America. And clearly it is so. But here it is, we are in 2020, and we are talking about Little Guyana and mighty ExxonMobil. GM is foundering about now, learning from its mistakes, competing with foreign company, with for outsiders for the a share in the auto market. But today's General Motors, a mover and shaker, and a colossal presence in the American economy, in American business affairs, is ExxonMobil. Exxon reaches to the State Department, it reaches to the White House at, at the first ring. Now here's where we are going with this. We need help here. We need America to stand with us and to say to Exxon, give these people a listening. We don't expect it to do much more than that publicly. Give these people a listening. Give them a fair hearing. Give them the space and the opportunity to sit across from the table and to discuss what bothers them and how you, you Exxon, can partner with them more satisfactorily. Now, some may say that, well, you're mixing politics with commerce, and I disagree, and here's why. Let's go back to 1953, and I call a name, Mozadeh, in Iran, and the Anglo-American Oil Company, when there was a problem there with commercial interests of the Americans and the British, there was intervention and a government was overthrown for the ascendancy of that oil business. In 1954, United Fruit, 
Now Chiquita Brands, we know about Chiquita Brands, not many, not many people know about United Fruit, was instrumental in moving the American government to sponsor a coup that removed Je Jacobo Arbenz in Guatemala. So politics intervenes on behalf of commercial interests to get business moving, to have business get its free way. Now, in 1972, ITT reached into the Nixon White House and was able to get a CIA-sponsored coup to topple Allende in Chile. 53, 54, 72. In Iran, in Guatemala, in Chile. The hands of the American government assisting American business. Now we say that the world has changed and it's different today. I agree to some extent. It's a brave new world and that may be so. So I'm saying now, just as our American powers, the State Department, the White House, all the way to the White House, intervened historically, weighed in with American governmental state resources, why can't the same be doing now on the other side of the coin, now that we talk about democracy, now we talk about transparency, now we talk about the will of the people. We, our, the will of our people, our Guyanese people, is that we must have a better share, a fair shake in our oil wealth. That's all we are asking for. I don't think we are asking for 50-50. We're asking for a better percentage. We're asking for a for some of those costs to to be lessened, to be minimized, to be removed from us if they could possibly be. We're looking for the add-ons and, and the things that we need to address where we can get a little something here and a little something there that makes a difference for us, that helps the Guyana government, whichever it is, to take care of its people, to take care, to fulfill its visions, to fulfill its promises. I think, given the history of the American government in business affairs internationally, and given its just recent record of influence in our elections here, electoral democracy, I think that the same energy, the same interest, the same involvement can be brought to bear quietly behind the scenes and publicly with a few statements, encouraging statements for us to say, Exxon should give these Guyanese a listen. That's oil democracy. That's what I think and that's what I ask my fellow Americans to do today. I trust that they are listening. I trust that this will get to them. Most likely I will write about this because I feel strongly about this. And until next week, this is Gabriel Lal on the National Outlook. Thank you for listening. Thank you for joining. Do have a blessed and productive and healthy weekend. God bless.